Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. In today's video, I'm gonna be making a vine trellis for an upstairs balcony in a house. Now, I've made several of these trellises for different applications, whether it be the backyard, the front yard, the garden, or wherever it may be, and they're all different sizes and shapes according to the application that I have. Therefore, the material that you use may be bigger or smaller depending on the application you have. So if you choose to do something like this, build it your own. Make it whatever you want for whatever application you may have. For today's video, this is gonna be about a seven foot by seven foot opening. Currently, there's a handrail in there that they wanna remove and they wanna fill this opening with this vine trellis. And ultimately, they're gonna be putting probably a couple of pots at the bottom and the vines are gonna fill in around this trellis and grow in real, real nice. So for this particular job, we're gonna be using some three quarter by inch and a half rectangular tube for the outer frame. And we're gonna be using some quarter inch solid bar stock for the trellis material on the inside. So let's get started on today's video. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, start cutting uh, the outer frame. And I like cutting everything on a 45 degree angle. That, uh, that makes everything nice and square. Um, I'm working off the Evolution S380 CPS. That's the saw that I use and make all my cuts with. Uh, you know, you can, they're available at kbctools.com. If you use the promo code Jimbo, you can receive 10% uh, off your order. I've had no issues with the saw. I've been using it for quite a, quite some time now. And, uh, you know, I really like the way it performs. There's many different things about it. I really like the, the locking mechanism and the adjustment uh, on the angles as well. All right, over to the welding table. And I got the table dogs in place. And we're going to square up the first two corners right here. And you can see that comes together really nice. Makes for a clean look right there. Clamp everything down with the armor fixture clamps. And then I'm just going to weld what I can at this point right here. Now my welding table is, is only five feet wide and it's about 10 feet long. So sometimes uh, like this, it's a little bit longer and sticks out. I do have a table extension for other uh, larger projects, but for this one right here, I've just got this little stand right here. I picked this up at uh, the local big box store. Works pretty good. Uh, you know what? I think it would be a good project for me because I use this quite a bit is maybe make a couple stands that are, that are very similar to this, adjustable, but maybe just on a, uh, with, with like a C channel on it instead of that roller. That roller is kind of weird. But uh, anyways, it works pretty good for what I'm using it for. You can see it just holds everything up and uh, I'm able to get my pieces put together right here. I've got it pulled up uh, tight to my table dogs on the back side right there. And that, uh, Makes that sure that it's nice and square. All right, with all four corners uh, welded in, I got to flip this thing around. And now it's going to be a little bit easier uh, now that I've actually got a frame uh, to work with. I can just rest uh, the majority of it on the, uh, on the table right there. And I'll be able to go ahead and just weld up the rest of the frame. You know, just like anything that you do, once you, uh, once you start welding something like this and get a big frame, uh, just the heat alone is enough to to draw this in and, and make it uh, got a little warp to it So what we're going to be doing here in a little bit is straightening that out I like to go around and get all my welds cleaned up right here And of course I'm using a Mercer 60 grit uh, flap disc and that's what I like to use it works the best for me The 60 grits uh, just the right uh, the right coarseness for me All four corners and then this is what I was talking about. A little warpage going in, not too much, maybe a quarter of an inch over seven feet. So I got to try to pull this as straight as I can because the opening that I have, I've made such a tight fit measurement wise that I have to have this thing straight in order to get in there. So you can see that I've got, I'm pulling against it one way and I've got some shims against it the other way. And it's just, I'm just trying to pull it straight to get it straight. You know, you can't be perfect, but, uh, but it's just something to be aware of if you go to do something like this. 
And here's a situation here that I've even got a ratchet strap and I've got to <laughs> reach across my shop, find a post somewhere and uh, pull that in a little bit. All right, once I'm happy with the, with the squareness, it's time to start laying in the interior pieces. And I'm going to start with the, the quarter inch round bar stock in, in each corner from corner to corner. And I was cutting it. I started cutting it to length right here in my bandsaw, but I got to tell you, and that, there was a lot of cuts going on, and uh, that worked okay for the first two. And I made some adjustment as we went along here. And these are just spacers, uh, 5 8 inch pieces of wood. I just get it to the center of the frame. And I want to keep it nice and even all the way across. And so for me, what I like to do is uh, get both pieces uh, corner to corner and get those pieces in. And then you know what you're working with uh, to balance the other pieces in the other directions in both ways. Uh, it takes a little bit of figuring out to do. But, uh, you know, once you get it figured out, um, yeah, it, it works out pretty good. Double check and be sure everything is lined up square and I just put a little bump tack in the center. This is what I'm talking about here. I'm going to lay these pieces in. I'm going to find out uh, where the, the sweet spot is in, in terms of the dimension of where they need to be. So everything stays nice and uh, um, consistent. I think I ended up somewhere around 13 inches. So each, each square ended up somewhere right around 13 inches. And now I've switched over to my cutoff saw. You can see right there. I just got a cutoff wheel on there, and that seems to work uh, pretty good. It's a little time consuming. Uh, this part of it is right here, you know, trying to get the first couple pieces in where they need to be. You know, and this is a kind of a cool project. Like I said, I've done several of these, and uh, you know, if you're if you have any kind of fabricating skills at all, and you've got a shop, uh, this is a really a good little project. Uh, you know, like I said, make it your own, any size, any shape, any dimension. They don't have to be on diagonal like this. They can be squares. But, uh, you know, whatever works for you. It's just a good little project. I've done several, and uh, a few years later, you know, the, the customer, I've gone back, and you can see that the vine grows around, that goes right around and fills in nicely and creates a nice pattern of greenery. Uh, pretty cool. Now the camera's on a little bit of an angle, so things may not look square or straight to you here, but trust me, they are. Everything is within an eighth of an inch. Uh, it may not look like it right there, uh, but it is just the angle that the camera's on. You know, this is pretty important. When you start uh, putting these pieces in, uh, you want to be sure that they line up, and when they do line up, you definitely want to get a tack uh, in the intersecting areas right there. So that's what I'm doing right here, double checking. Now I know that I'm good. I just get a tack so it's not going to move around. All right, so the idea here for me is to put this in a weave pattern. You can see that I'm going uh, up and down, up and down, kind of weaving these in. Um, I thought that just gave a little bit of a, a good look to it. Having a problem with my hood. All right, don't even notice it. Uh, you guys might notice it falling down quite a bit. I'm constantly lifting it up. It's falling down. Constantly lifting it up. Now I know all I got to do is reach up there with my hand and tighten this little screw on the outside of the helmet and it's going to tighten up. But sometimes you just get so involved in your work, you know that it's happening, but it's just automatic that you just can't, <laughs> I can't think, I can't think to do it. I keep saying, I got to tighten this hood up. I got to tighten this hood up and I just don't get around to doing it. Ultimately, somewhere along the line right here, I just had had enough and I had, uh, I, I finally tightened it up. Uh, you can see that that cutoff saw really works good. That That's a much better idea than I originally was doing it on the band saw. Sometimes it takes a couple of uh, times to figure out what's best for you and what's going to work for you. In this, in, this, in this situation, it was uh, a lot faster and a lot easier. What happened to my gloves? I started out wearing gloves. Now I'm not even wearing gloves. On off, on off. You know, it. it uh, I need to. Uh, I need to be working with my hands right here, and not so much uh, working with <laughs> the gloves. It's just I need the. I need my fingers. I gotta feel my fingers of what's going on right here. And it's just a little bump tack anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. 
And there it is, just weaving it, weaving it up, down, in, and out. Done this a couple of times. I've made some mistakes. If you make a mistake, you don't have as long, almost have to cut the whole thing apart. Now, right here, uh, you see that this is what I was talking about. It, it, it may look like it's out of square. Uh, it is it, two things. The angle of the camera for one, uh, it's not sitting square on my table. And the up and down, the weaving effect, uh, it gives that illusion that it is just not square. But uh, like I can tell you that I'm within an eighth of an inch. And even if you're off a little bit, you know, it's not even really that noticeable. There's so much going on in the center part of this right here that nobody would ever notice anything, especially when you get some greenery growing on it. Not a big deal. All right. Well, there we go. All right. So I went ahead and welded the other side. I didn't want to bore you with that. I think you get the idea. You can see those welds are all the way around uh, and the center piece is welded as well. And this is the way that I'm going to attach it in the opening. Um, we're going to be uh, th this. I've used a three quarter inch hole saw and then uh, that's left a three quarter inch hole. And then the hole saw has a quarter inch drill bit on the for the for the pilot hole. And that's what I'm using for the mounting hole. We're going to be using some uh, some quarter inch screws for this. And uh, the idea is to run the screws uh, into the wood trim on the side. And then I've got some rubber plugs that I'm going to use to cap this up with. And uh, it's going to you know, give it that uh, nice finished look. And here's those plugs, three quarter inch. Get them on Amazon. I got all kinds of different sizes. All right, so this thing is headed over to the powder coater. We're going to be getting it powder coated uh, flat black. And now uh, that's what the customer wanted. And then we're going to get it installed. And uh, those black plugs will good, be a good enhancement for that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. It's something simple that you can do in your shop. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe for more videos. Check us out at jimboscarage.com. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.